and welcome. My name is Prue or Prue LaRue and today I have something like just really stupid to share with you. But something really stupid that I really also wanted to take really seriously. <laughs> but this is why it's taken me so long to get a video up. I've been trying to perfect this video and then I've been like, oh, it's not good. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to show you the entire process I took to make hairbrushes out of my cat Marceline. So Marceline is a pure bred ragdoll and if you've ever been in a house that has a ragdoll you would know how much they shed. And I've been thinking about what I could do like with her hair. Um, and then it, it somehow dawned on me to make a uh, God. makeup brushes with her hair. So I'm going to save them till the end, but I'll show you the whole process that I took to make these hair brushes, though I did not film the initial process because that took like 24 hours. Um, I initially soaked them in acetone. I just put them in a glass of acetone nail polish remover and soaked the paint brushes in them until the glue dissolved and then threw out the old like hair that they had used and then I made it into my own. So we're going to start off, I'm going to show you all the things I did and then at the end we'll come back and I'll show you me demonstrating them. Um, I hope you enjoy. Let me know what you think. Thank you. So unfortunately the acetone really destroyed these brushes. So I grabbed two sanding blocks from Bunnings, one fine grade and one coarse. This is what the acetone did to the brushes and it just did a lot of damage. So I've initially I went in with the coarse grade sanding block and just went to town on all of them just to really even out the surface and this sort of left them feeling a bit coarse still so I did have to go in with the fine coarse grade sanding block. I chose to do this just to make sure that everything was perfect for these brushes and I really wanted to do a good job to you guys. Um, yeah. This took a really long time. I'm not gonna lie. This is uh, like hours right now that you're looking at. So this is the fine course one that I'm going in with now. Uh, you can sort of see it's a bit different, but it did a really got good job of smoothing them out and making them a bit nicer to the touch. Whereas the coarse grade definitely left a few marks, but it really got rid of some stuff. The acetone had just really done a huge number on these brushes that I wasn't expecting where the paint had really peeled up. And that's sort of what necessitated the need to sand them all. But I think I think it's worth it for the final look. I'm going to show you what they all look like once I finish sanding them. And there they are, these beauties. Now we're moving into the next step. And that is... Hello. This is Marceline, by the way, if you've never seen her before. She does have her own Instagram. I'll link it below. But to... I really wanted to make these a uniform color so I got a clothes hanger that I didn't care about and then I got some wool that I had laying around and I tied them all together and hang them from here and then going outside I picked up some Dulux metallic blue spray paint you can see my sample spray paint in the back on that Starbucks brush and I have just used a shoebox a shoebox that I had laying around to spray paint them I did find they sort of stuck together and it was kind of really hard to get it exactly correct. So this definitely took a bit of finessing and quite a few layers. I'd probably say I did at least five layers on these brushes. So I'm just trying to separate them out so they're not sticking together because I don't want to have an uneven paint job on any of them. I want them to be nice, smooth and have a really nice effect. Um, blue is just one of my favorite colors and that's why I chose that. So at the moment I'm trying to separate them out and give them a bit more space. I just put them together too closely when I initially put it on. Uh, this took, and then I, once I'd finished doing this, I left them out overnight to dry. And yeah, they, I do love the way they look. So moving into probably the cutest section of this video, if I do say so myself, but this is harvesting the hair from Marceline. Being brushed is like one of her favorite things to do. And then I like to change up the brushes that I use. This purple brush is her absolute favorite. She just loves being brushed with this one. I think it must have like a massaging effect or something fancy because you can see her just loving life right now. 
if I do stop brushing her before she's ready, she will give me like a little tap with her claw, like her paw, and it's just the cutest thing ever. She is about to do it. See, as I walk away, she's like, no, what? Come back. But I do, and this time I'm coming back at her with the Ferminator. This is like a fancier brush, um, and it's really good for the long haired cats. You just get so much fur out of them in one seating, and it she just loves it. You've got to be really careful that you're not pulling too hard on their fur just because it can hurt them, but she loves being ferminated. And then I just, I love her beautiful blue eyes when I do catch them, and this is her favorite thing to do when I'm brushing her. And oh, this is a window hammock that she loves to sit in. So this is Mission Control, and this is my setup that I did so I could show you how I came around to making these brushes. It, it did take a little bit of finessing, and I sort of had a few plans which didn't work out, but I will take you through and show it all. Why not? So initially I tried to harvest the thickest pieces of hair from her, and then I was going to put them in this like bolts that I'd bought from Bunnings to keep them straight so I could cut them. Uh, they kept flying away and it just got really difficult. It was going to take me forever and a day to get the right amount of hairs to achieve this with. So I ended up moving on and just using the hair that I did have and then rolling it together. Uh, you can see one that I did attempt to make. I actually didn't film that one, but we can show you this process. So I tr attempted using a zip ties to keep them in a bunch. And then once I did that, I gave them a bit of a brush just to try and get any knots out. Cat's fur does tend to mat very easily, especially when it's this fine. So I tried a few methods to get the hair into the dowel and what I found was just rubbing it until it was really fine so I could stick one part of it and then pulling it through was the most effective and then cutting the zip tie off and that sort of seemed to work. Though unfortunately being my first time filming like this kind of scene I didn't get everything in camera as I did it and this also took me very long time if you're wondering I'm watching the TV show revenge right now because I can't stop watching it but I've maintained that same sort of style that I was doing I did find that the super glue got super super hot when it touched cat hair I don't know what that chemical reaction is but I, I just, if you do try this, be really careful. Super glue and cat hair is not meant to be together. So I tried giving it a little bit of a cut here just to make it a little bit neater. I think muslin comes for a little fizz. Yeah. Anyway, I'm taking you through and now I'm going to give them a wash. This is the only treatment that they got. And I'm using the Dr. Bronner's soap. I love this soap for washing my makeup brushes. It is absolutely amazing. I did give them a bit of an attempt with some eyeshadow and you can see it's just they turned completely blue. So I'm pretty confident with the Dr. Bronner's soap. It usually can get pretty much anything out. It's definitely worth trying. So this is all the brushes after I finish washing them. And I'm just giving them a little bit of a cut while they're still wet. Just trying to like channel my inner hairdresser because they always cut your hair when it's wet, don't they? It seemed like the logical thing to do. And this is all of the brushes as they are. I then let them dry. They took like a day to dry, I would say. Uh, this is my drying mat and I dry all of my brushes on this. I do have a video of my, like how I clean all my makeup brushes if you're interested. I'm just continuing with a bit of a cut and I was trying to do a bit of curved edges. My main goal was to try and replicate like the MAC 217 brush. And yeah, I love the color of the handles. I wish I really want some makeup brushes like this. They look cool. Uh, let me know what you think of the process so far, and we are back to real time proof. All right, here we are. All right, we're here for the final. What you've been waiting for for this whole video? The eyeshadow brushes. Uh, you've seen probably what they look like mostly. I made them last week, and this is what they currently look like. Unfortunately. Cat's fur is not like the best product to make a brush out of. So my goal was to try and create a brush similar to the MAC 217. Uh, but the problem is that Cat's fur just isn't like that. I mean, it's just not that thick. It's very, very thin and fluffy and it mats very easily. But 
so I think I'm not going to be able to do like a full look but let's I did do varying sizes so here is like this one I, and I tried to brush them and clean them but they just get worse and worse and I did try and take out like the best hairs like if I had created it solely from these hairs I think it would be more successful I'm totally opening from doing it for a different animal because it was kind of fun to make my own brushes I think it, I could I think I could do this um yeah and it like it's just the cat's hair isn't the best so let's and also um yes I didn't clean these properly or treat the hair uh that's mainly because like I probably consume heaps of her hair already Marceline loves to shed and we have her fur all over the house we leave the house with her fur on us I'm always finding cat fur everywhere I go um and it's everywhere in our house like just it covers everything so I, I didn't I'm not that bothered I did wash them as you did see so yeah let's give it a try and let's go into the thickest one I don't actually have any highlighter on I feel like these are gonna be best for highlighter if you can figure out which one it is let me know oh I want to do this one which I feel like it's gonna be rose quartz so dabbing, high quality, already sort of disintegrating, and oh, not too bad. Um, the fit lids like I don't know. I don't think I could ever use these like properly. But it is um. It is blending it in, but it's also absorbing a lot of product, as you can see. And it's starting to feel, I feel like it's absorbing my oils. And it's just, it's becoming like a ball. So I, I don't think you should make makeup brushes out of cat fur, but um, I wanted to know why no one had ever done it. Um, I feel like I know. So I'm going to give this brush a go. I'm going with this white one. So you can sort of see just how it uh, collapses down in the product. And then it becomes like this weird ball thing. Like, it just doesn't have any substance to it. Oh, doesn't that go on nicely? <laughs> I don't think the longevity in this product is there and I would I'm very tempted to just take all my eye makeup off and try them but they just won't work uh, I think the best thing they're ever gonna work for is doing that light highlight they they're not gonna be blender ones but what I will do just to show you what they do let's uh let's choose this one here Let's go into one of my Dubious Place eyeshadow palettes uh, just to give you a demonstration. This is the festival. Um, I'm going to go into this pink. But you can see it's sort of just, uh, I don't know, as soon as powder hits it, it's, it's not a good time. And it becomes uh, much less things. And then, yes, I think you could use it for face products, but I think for getting a nice blend it's just not there and the hair is quite porous so it absorbs all the shadow as you blend it in so see I've just got some shadow here and then I'm trying to put it on the back of my hand no the the fur is uh, absorbed at all but I've now made it pink um I'd love to know what you think of my eye brushes I quite enjoy I quite enjoy the look of them from like like this but uh I wish the fur was a bit more tamed I'm wondering if I stole hair from a short kit a short haired cat if it would be better <laughs> anyway this is just something uh pretty silly that I decided to do I hope you've enjoyed seeing how I made them and I'd love to know if you think I should keep trying to make eyeshadow brushes what animals should I try and get fur from? And 
what do you think I should have done differently? Anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've had a laugh. I really do. Um, anyway, I absolutely appreciate and adore you. Mwah.